Okay, so let's get started on our Tau Defense tutorial. First of all, we need to create a new project and the project type that we need to create is a 2D project. So make sure that when you open up uh, Unity, you'll need to click the 2D here so that you don't have a 3D project because we are going to work with uh, 2D sprites. Um, and it makes it way easier for us to export and uh, import, I mean, import new sprites and stuff if we have the 2D settings enabled. And then just give your project any name. I'm going to call mine Tower Defense 1.0 uh, because this is the first video. And then you click the Create button. When your project is open, we will need to bring in our sprites right away because we need to create our tile map as the first thing. So this is the first thing I'm going to do. And the way that I've built up these tutorials is that I will be adding things slowly, one, one thing at a time. Um, so now we will try to create the tile map and we'll try to figure out how we place the tiles uh, on the screen, how we sort them out so they have uh, so they're standing in columns and rows and everything. So we do everything step by step instead of just uh, writing the complete code and then it works without you knowing how it works. So you will learn how everything is going to work. So first of all, we need to add our sprites. So right click on your asset folder, create a new folder and call it sprites. So you right click, click create and select folder. So this is the folder where all your sprites should go. So I'm going to take from off screen here, as you can see that I have all the sprites here, monster portal, tiles, tower and so on. I'm going to take them uh, from off screen. I'm going to pull them into my sprites folder here. And then you just wait for it to uh, to implement in, import it in unity when the import is done we need to make sure that our sprites has the right setup because if you made a 3d project by a mistake or something then the sprites that you import uh, into unity will have a wrong format um, it will have a wrong texture format that is so let's try to click on one of our sprites when it's done important apparently it takes uh, quite a while Go. So if I click on anything, let's say portal, open portal, then you can see the um, there the texture type is sprite 2D and UI, and that's exactly what we need. But if you made a 3D project by mistake, it will be texture here. So you have to go and select all your sprites by yourself and select sprite 2D and UI. But because we made a 2D project, we are all good now. Okay, so let's start with start with the tiles. I'm simply going to use one tile right now, but you can use as many different tiles as you want to build up the level. Um, but right now we're going to use one tile to create the tile map, and then later we are going to implement it so that we can use a text document for uh, creating a map with different paths and everything. So let's go to tiles folder, and in here there are some different tiles. Um, I'm simply going to use grass01 as the, as the tile that I'm going to use and then we can pull it into the scene. Okay, if you look here, the tile is quite large and if we would have more tiles of this, we will only need like three, maybe three and a half tiles to fill up the space here. And that's not what we're interested in. We would like the tiles to be a little smaller. So you need to select your grass. And if you select the grass, then over in the inspector here, there's something called pixels per unit. And the larger the number pixels per unit is, the smaller the sprite will be on the screen. So instead of going in here and saying the scale should be 0.5 and everything and do that for every single sprite, we can actually select the sprite, go to the pixels per unit and write 300 for example, and then click apply in the uh, bottom right here. And now you see your sprite is way smaller um, and the scale is still the same here. So we don't have to worry about the scale. So this is going to be done for each sprite in your game because all the sprites is created with the same scale ratio. Um, so just to make sure that everything uh, fits the right scale, then we can select all our tiles here, uh, click the top one, hold shift down, click on the bottom one, and then simply go to the pixels per unit and write 300 and then click apply. So now all your tiles at least are scaled correctly. 
wait a little um hold a little on with the, the with the monsters because maybe they don't need to be scaled that much down because we might want them larger anyway this is our grass tile and we would like to be able to place one tile here and then place the next tile here and we need to do all this from a script right so this is what go what's going to happen when we run our script and everything is going to be placed like this a little nicer though but all the way here so that it fills up our screen so we will need to create a prefab from our tile so that we can instantiate it from a script prefab is short for prefabricate and they're used for creating game objects from our scripts and basically we can also use them when we have some game object where we need to set up some different values for example a player's health a player's speed and everything well then we can create a prefab from um, for that player so that we don't need to set up all those uh, stats every time we need a new player in our game uh, but right now we are going to use a prefab for our tile so that we can grab that tile or grab that prefab from a script and uh, instantiate the tile on the screen here so just to have some order, we'll need to right click on the asset folder, click create, click folder and write prefabs. So now we have a new folder for prefabs. To create a, create a prefab, we can simply take our grass tile here and drag it from the hierarchy into the prefab folder here. And then we can simply delete the grass tile from our game here or from our hierarchy. So right now we can take this prefab and drag it into the scene and you'll see that it appears up here in the top left corner. But we will have to create a script that should do this for us. So we can right click on the asset folder, click create, select a new folder and call it scripts because we like to have some order here. And then inside the new folder you can right click again, click create, C sharp script and call it level manager. So I'm going to create some different managers throughout um, out this course and each manager will have its own responsibilities. The level manager, of course, is responsible for creating our level. So double click on the new script to open it up. And when the script is open, I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see, we can start creating our level. So we will have to use the x and y axis to place our tiles so let's say we are going to make um, the functionality right now and later we are going to make a larger level but just to get the hang of what we're doing uh, we will have to use the x axis out here to add the x um, uh, the horizontal it's called the horizontal tiles and when we've done that we jump down here and we take the vertical tiles right so we do horizontal jump one vertical down horizontal one vertical down and horizontal so we place them like so um, to do this we'll have to write some functionality first of all we can create a new function called private void create level this function will be used for creating our level our, in our game so let's let's try to spawn one tile before we do anything else so up here we'll have to make a um, private game object tile okay so some of you guys might already have worked a little with unity and maybe you're used to creating public objects here or public variables here um, so that you can reach them in the inspector well we could do like this and say public game object and save this and then jump back into unity and then click create you should do this click create click empty and create a new game object called level manager so now we have our level manager and the level manager needs to have our level um, script attached to it so just drag your level manager onto the level manager object now you see there is a room for the tile here called non game object so we can reach our prefab through this field here but um, this is because this object is public what I would like to do is to make it private because in general in object oriented programming it's very very bad practice to make your fields public lots of people are asking me this why I do private instead of public when you can just do public and everything works well if something is public everything everywhere can reach it and manipulate with it 
and it is more error prone when you code. Let's say you're more people coding on the same project. Well, if the other scripts or other classes or whatever don't need to have access to something, then make it private so other people can't change it by mistake. Or, and also it's one of the object-oriented principles, one of the very basics of object-oriented programming. So you can see if I make this one private, then no one else than this script can access my tile. I can't go to my game manager later, which is another script, and delete this tile by mistake. I can only manipulate it from this script that I'm working in right now. So if I do this and save, you'll see that it disappears here. But there's actually a way of showing our um, private fields in our editor as well. Because all public fields in Unity are serialized. And instead of making a public field to make it serialized, we can actually tell Unity to serialize a private field. So we can actually do like this, say serialize field, save. And if we do so, well, then our tile is appearing up here again. So now we can go to our prefab folder, take the grass, pull it onto this um, spot here. So now we have a reference to our grass um, pro prefab so that we can go in our script and instantiate this tile. So we can actually go to the create level function and down here we can say instantiate, um, what did I call it, tile? There we go. So now we can create our tile. If we save this now and run the game, of course, then nothing is going to happen because we haven't executed the create level function yet. So you can see nothing happens here. I'm also going to do so it doesn't maximize. There we go. So if I go back here and go to my start function and write create level, then I am executing the create level function in start. Start is called once uh, when you initialize your game. So this is here we want to create our level. So save this and in Unity. And if I play the game now, you'll see that it creates one tile. So now we have our first tile in place and now we need to write the code for placing the rest of the tiles. Okay. So as we discussed earlier, there is something called an X axis and a Y axis that goes down here. So we'll have to use that X and Y axis to place these tiles. So let's jump into the script. And in here, we'll have to make two for loops. So make one for loop called X. And let's say we make it five multiply five by five, uh, the tile map right now. Later, we'll just make it very uh, dynamic, but just, just use uh, numbers right now. And call this one Y. Actually, I would like to change these around. Sorry about that. Would like Y to be the outer one. And I would like X to be the inner one. Okay, so we have a for loop with Y and a for loop with X. Um, if you saw that I was writing these for loops very fast, if you're using Visual Studio, you can write for like this. If I could hit the keys, for, and then if you click two times and tap, it creates the actual structure for you. Just a little tip. Anyway, we have two for loops here. And inside that for loop, we can take our instantiate tile and move in. So now you should have a structure that looks like this, two for loops, and then an instantiate of tile. If you save this um, and play the game now, you'll see that we have lots of tiles. We have 25 tiles right now. They are all placed at the same position. As you can see here, see, they're not placed next to each other. So we need to write some code so that the tiles will be placed right up against each other and then when we're done with the one line here it will start placing them in the line below like so okay so let's add a little more to our code here and by the way by the way if your tile is not placed in the top left corner right now don't worry about it we will fix it it's simply because i created my prefab when my tile was placed up here but we will write the code to place it in the correct place. Um, so I can basically take my tile here, move it to the middle here and recreate the prefab. And then you'll see when I start my game, the tile will be placed here around the middle instead. So don't worry about it if your tile is not in the top left corner. 
Yes, so let's try to write some more code. First of all, we will need to know how wide a tile is because when we place a tile, we place it here and the next tile is placed exactly the same place on top of this. But we need to know the width of this tile so that we can place the next tile next to the original one, right? Because we need to know how wide this is so we can add this to the position so it's placed next to it. So to do so, we'll have to um, what's called like generate the width so we can say float width. Well, let's just call it tile size actually. So the tile size equal to tile. So we take this tile up here, and we need to access the width of it, and we can do that from the sprite render. So on the grass here. There's something called the sprite renderer, and the sprite renderer is on all sprites. And this sprite renderer here basically makes sure that we can see the sprite. Let's see if we disable it, you'll see that it disappears, right? So this one also contains information about the width of the sprite. So we need to get that. So we can say tile.get component sprite renderer. And then we say sprite. So we are on the sprite renderer here and on the sprite renderer we need to access the sprite to get the width so get component gets the sprite renderer dot sprite gets the sprite dot sprite dot bounce dot size dot x so this is now equal to the width of our sprite okay then we can go down here and make game object new tile to make a reference to the new tile we just created so that we can manipulate the um, what's called the position and then we can say new tile the transform the position is equal so now we take the new tile we just created and takes the transform for setting the position right you should know that all objects has a transform and the transform decides the position in our world we have the grass here, you'll see if I take the position, move it, change the position to transform up here, then it moves in the world. So this is what we're doing from the script, basically. And new vector free. And we say tile size multiplied with x, um, comma, tile size multiplied with y. There we go. And let's just make sure that the C value is actually zero. So this is the line of code that you will be writing here. Okay, so save this and go back to Unity. And if we play the game again, then you'll see now the tiles are placed next to each other like so. But as you see, they're not placed in the correct uh, place right now on the screen. But now we can actually place our tiles in X and Y, X and, in X and Y grid here. Okay. So I'm going to end this part of the video here. In the next video, we will be placing the tiles in the correct place on the screen. Um, so thank you very much for watching. And remember that InScope Studios is a community founder page. So all your support is very important to me. Uh, if you want to support me, you can do that in different ways. You can go to the top link here. Um, where you can go to the Patreon page and support me there. And if you do so, then you can get all the assets for every single uh, tutorial that I've ever created for YouTube. Or you can also support me by going to the bottom link and getting one of my projects as a standalone uh, product. Again, thank you very much for watching.